of all, because you're new, I just wanted you to know that we are so glad that you have joined with us, that you asked your friends to bring you along all the time. Yeah. Isn't that great? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming and making this your home. Now, can you tell us anything about what happened today? Uh, well, basically, we learned about wisdom and doing the right thing and, like, how the little things can count against the big, bad things. So do you think you're a wise person? Yes. <laughs> awesome. Woo! Yes. Can you believe it? We are on week four of our Movies to Live By series. And this week, we're going to be talking about Fiddler on the Roof. You know, these movies that we've been looking at for their spiritual content have been quite an education for me. Sometimes I don't even know the movies until we look at um, talking about them. So that means I usually have to see them two or three times the week before Sunday shows up. And then I feel as though I know the movies very, very well. Fiddler on the Roof is like that. How many of you know the story of Fiddler on the Roof? Oh my goodness, then what am I doing up here? You all could be up here. Well, I remember when this 1971 movie came out. I saw it, it won three Academy Awards, it won two Golden Globes. And I remember that I loved this story that came from the Broadway show. And today, even though I probably haven't seen it in 20, 25 years, it has a beautiful message, and I realize that the message itself is quite eternal, isn't it? I think we can see ourselves in the great story. And just for those of you that are not familiar or those of you that would like a little bit of a refresher, let me set it up for you. The story of Fiddler on the Roof takes place in the early 1900s in Russia, the main character is Tevya, who is a milkman, and he is somebody who is struggling to make ends meet for himself, his wife, his five daughters, and he is also struggling to adjust to changes that come in life and changes that come with the changing times of culture and society. He is a great man. He's a wise man. He's an honest man, and he will be our hero today, Tevya. Good morning. Good morning. A fiddler on the roof. It sounds crazy, no? <laughs> but here in our little village of Anatevka, you might say that each and every one of us is a fiddler on the roof, trying to scratch out a simple, pleasant tune without breaking his neck. It isn't easy. And you may ask, why do we go up there if it's so dangerous? Well, we do so because of our traditions. And you may ask, how do you keep your balance? And it is because of our traditions that we have kept our balance for many, many years. Here in Anatevka, we have traditions for everything, how to eat, how to sleep, how to wear our clothes. For instance, we always keep our heads covered, and we always wear a prayer shawl. It shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did these traditions get started? And I'll tell you, I don't know. <laughs> but it's a tradition. And because of our traditions, each and every one of us knows who he is and what God expects him to do. And without our traditions, our lives would be as shaky as, well, as a fiddler on the roof. Tradition. Who day and night must scramble for a living, feed his wife and children, say his daily prayers, and who has the right as master of the house to have the final word at home? The, the papa! The papa, the papa, 
tradition. Who must know the way to make a proper home, a quiet home, a kosher home? Who must raise a family and run the house so Papa's free to read the holy book? The mama, the mama tradition. The mama, the mama tradition. Tradition, tradition, tradition. You, do you have traditions that you hold on to? Do you have traditions that you love, that papas do and mamas do, that families do, that cultures do? These are the things that filled Tevya's life, the traditions that gave him stability and strength during hard times, the traditions that grounded him that anchored him when everything else was changing. Well, Tevye was a man of great tradition. He was a Jewish man. He was somebody who held to the traditions of his culture and his people. He held to being the man, the father, the husband of the household. So let's go ahead and meet Tevya as far as the, um, we look at the, the basic roles in the movie. And so I want to introduce these roles. You'll see him from the film. That's him in the upper left-hand corner. And he is somebody who has three daughters that are of marrying age. Now, he wants his daughters to be married well, and so it means that they must work with a matchmaker, and it means that he must approve of the individuals with whom they will marry. Right next to him is Golda. Golda is his pragmatic, opinionated wife. They've been not like yours, Lonnie. <laughs> As I was saying, Golda, Golda is his pragmatic, opinionated wife. And she wants her daughters to marry very well. On the bottom of the slide, we have the three daughters that are, are um, Zeidel. On the left-hand side, she's the oldest. Havel, who is in the middle. And then, no, I didn't do that right. Hadel in the middle. And Hava, the redhead, who is the youngest, who is of marrying age. And they are very different from their father in that they are, a not, they are not attached to tradition but they are very interested in getting married. <laughs> and so we see these individuals come together. They make up the story of Fiddler on the Roof. And we find that the spiritual theme is the theme of change. How do we deal with change? How do we move through it gracefully and with wisdom? How do we embrace that which is good and new? And how do we discern? How do we decide? How do we open and become willing to change that leads us forward, that helps us to grow? James Dillard Freeman is a great unity poet and author, and he talks about change. He writes about it, and he says that if we are to live, we are going to change, for there is nothing that is alive that stands still. All things change. He also tells us that if we are willing to grow, if we are willing to evolve, then we are called to embrace change. So let's think about that for a minute. Virtually everyone has an opinion or a relationship with change. Everyone has an idea of how they see themselves, correct? I like change. I hate change. 
I'm open to change. I resist it all the way. And as we open to the power and the presence of change in our lives, because our lives change and we change as well, what matters is that we use wisdom. And what matters is that we use love. And so these are the challenges that take place within Tevya's being. And he finds that he is called to struggle with the power and the experience of change within his families as his daughters are preparing to get married. So the first thing that happens for Tevya is that his oldest daughter, Zidal, is set up with a matchmaker that he arranges. And in his wisdom, he picks somebody who's quite wealthy, somebody who is quite a bit older, but not a love match for her. And he is celebrating this whole event. He thinks that he's made a perfect match with the matchmaker. There's a great agreement going on. And then he looks into Zidal's eyes, and he hears her words, and he sees and feels that she is in love with a poor tailor named Mottle. This experience shakes him. It distresses him. He doesn't know quite what to do with it. But ultimately, he allows love and the desire for his daughter's happiness to lead the way. And he most creatively finds a way to break the engagement. Well, there's Tevya. He's working through this. He's talking to God. He's feeling it out. He's feeling good that he bent just enough to break and allow love to lead the way. And he's just wiggled out of tradition. And then he discovers that his second daughter, his second daughter, Hoddle, has also fallen in love. And she has not worked with a matchmaker. Well, she has fallen in love with a social activist who, who has passion and life and zeal. And so she is head over heels with them, and ultimately they decide together, just between themselves, that they are going to get married. Let's take a look at how wonderfully Tevya receives this news. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Reptavia. I have some bad news. What? I must leave here. When? Tomorrow morning. I'm sorry to hear that, Perchik. We'll all miss you. But I also have some good news. Good. You can congratulate me. Congratulations? What for? We are engaged. Engaged? Yes, Papa, we're engaged. Oh, no, you're not. I know you like him and he likes you, but you're going away and you're staying here. So have a nice trip, Perchik, and I hope you'll be very happy and my answer is no. Please, Papa, you don't understand. I understand, I understand. I gave my permission to Motland Seidel, so you feel you also have a right. I'm sorry, Perchik, I like you. But you're going away, so go in good health. And my answer is still no. You don't understand, Papa. And you are not listening. I said no. But Tevia, we are not asking for your permission, only for your blessing. We are going to get married. Well, you are not asking for my permission? But we would like your blessing, Papa. I can't believe my own ears. My blessing? For what? For going over my head, impossible. At least with title and model, they asked me, they begged me, but now if I like it or not, you'll marry him. So what do you want from me? Go on, 
be wed and tear out my beard and uncover my head. Tradition, and not even asking permission from the Papa. What's happening to the tradition? One little time I pulled out the thread, and where has it led? Where has it led? Where has it led to this? A man tells me he's getting married. He doesn't ask me, he tells me. But first he abandons you. He's not abandoning me, Papa. As soon as I can, I will send for her and marry her. I love her. He loves her. Love. It's a new style. On the other hand, our old ways were once new, weren't they? On the other hand, they decided without parents, without the matchmaker. On the other hand, did Adam and Eve have a matchmaker? Oh, yes, they did. And it seems these two have the same matchmaker. They're going over my head. Unheard of. Absurd. For this, they want to be blessed. Unthinkable. I lock her up in her room. I couldn't. I should. But look at my daughter's eyes. I should lock her up in my room, her room. I shouldn't. I should. These are the kinds of feelings we have when we deal with change. And so we can feel the angst that Tevye feels. He is so anchored in what is right and proper, in that which always happens, the tradition of things. And at the same time, his heart opens to the power of love. And it's as though the love, the, the power of unity, the power of harmony, the power of joy that comes from love opens his thinking and his feeling in ways that he is not accustomed to. And so he thinks about this. Marriage and love, they go together. Unheard of, unthinkable. But he thinks a little more. And then he starts to wonder, what about his own marriage? It was arranged 25 years ago. What about love? Golda, do you love me? Do I what? Do you love me? Do I love you? Well? With our daughters getting married and this trouble in the town, you're upset, you're worn out. Go inside, go lie down. Maybe it's indigestion. <laughs> Golda. I'm asking you a question. Do you love me? You're a fool. I know, Golda. I know. But do you love me? Do I love you? Well? For 25 years I've washed your clothes, cooked your meals, cleaned your house, given you children, milked your cow. After 25 years, why talk about love right now? Golda, the first time I met you was on our wedding day. I was scared. I was shy. I was nervous. So was I. But my father and my mother said we'd learn to love each other. And so now I'm asking you, Golda, do you love me? I'm your wife! I know, Golda. But do you love me? Do I love him? Well? For 
25 years I've lived with him, fought with him, starved with him. 25 years my bed is his. If that's not love, what is? Then you love me. I suppose I do. And I suppose I love you too. It doesn't change a thing, but even so, after 25 years, it's nice to know. It is so beautiful to see how Tevye has a desire to be loved. It is a desire that lives in all of us. And the revolutionary thought that it would be in marriage, that marriage would be more than functional, but that marriage would be based on connection, on oneness, was revolutionary in his thinking and being. I think about our beloved way shower, our elder brother, Jesus. And even though it wasn't romantic love, he also lived and showed us the way if any of us would be called to be in Tevye's shoes. If you remember the story of Jesus, you're going to remember that he was raised Jewish, but it would have been equally true had he been born and raised in any culture, in any religious tradition that had very strong and rigid rules and ideas, very strong norms of how to be. In the case of Jesus, he was raised in the Jewish tradition as well. And so he knew what the rules were. He knew what the norms were. He knew what the expectations were. But he was called to love. There were times. There were times when people reached out to him and they had such a hunger. They wanted to learn from him. And they wanted to be near him. For they knew that being with him would open up a healing presence and a healing within themselves. Sometimes these experiences happened on the Sabbath. And in Jesus' tradition, nobody was to labor on the Sabbath. But it was the love in his heart, his compassion for those that were reaching out to him, his love for those that were in need that caused him to cross that boundary of tradition and open his heart so others could receive what was needed for their growth and for their life. And if you think about it, you'll remember that Jesus was also one who was taught and raised to not go beyond his social circle, he was taught to not step out of the cultural norms of those that would be allowed into his life. But again, out of love, he stepped beyond those boundaries and those traditions. He spent time with those that were lepers and left in a colony to be removed from all people. He dined with individuals that were not Jewish. He healed and spoke to women, talked to prostitutes. He did all the things that he was not allowed to do according to tradition. But it was the nature and the power of love that so moved him this divine power of compassion, of oneness, 
that caused him to step beyond, not to abolish the laws of the land, but to allow love, wisdom, and compassion to lead the way. And so this very thing that Jesus taught us by his example is the very thing that Tevya is starting to do. He is stepping beyond with his daughters. He's moving. And he's feeling pretty darn good about himself. He's even feeling a little love from his wife. So everything is looking possible. He can deal with change. He can deal with tradition and make some shifts as need be until he can't. And so we find out that Tevya has a limit. He has reached a limit in his mind and his heart when he discovers that his third daughter, Hava, has also fallen in love. No matchmaker, no permission from the parents. And not only that, she has fallen in love with somebody outside of their religion. Well, this is truly unheard of. This is unacceptable. Tevya is in great distress. He doesn't even know how to begin to think about this. And he cannot and he will not bend this time. He is so upset that he now disowns Hava from his family. She has married her beloved. And in, in Tevya's mind, and in honor of tradition, then also for Golda and the daughters, Hava no longer exists. How sad this must have been. How tragic. And at the same time that there is this great loss of this beautiful daughter, we discover that the Jews in this beautiful little community are now being forced to leave their homes, their life as they have known it for many, many years. And out of persecution, they are being forced to run away, to go away. Change is happening. And it's forced upon all of them. But before they leave the traditions, the familiarity of what they have known, Hava comes to say goodbye. Papa will see you. I want him to. I want to say goodbye to him. He won't listen to you. But at least he will hear. Maybe it would be better if I told Mama. Havala. We came to say goodbye. We are also leaving this place. We are going to Krakow. We cannot stay among people who can do such things to others. We wanted you to know that.
Some are driven away by edicts, others by silence. Goodbye, Papa. Mama. Come, Hava. though it breaks Tevye's heart that his daughter is no longer connected with the Jewish tradition in the way he'd always dreamed of. He imagined that his daughter would marry a Jewish man. We find that love finds a way. His heart softens in the end, doesn't it? And he mutters the words under his breath. And God be with you. This is the power of change when we allow change to be led by love and not by the rigidity of the mind and the dictates of what has always been. When we open up to love, there is a new way for all of us that causes us to stretch beyond our comfort zones, to go beyond that which we know, that beyond that which is comfortable, beyond that which we want or desire. But as spiritual beings, love will find a way to lead us to a higher level and a higher way. And God be with you. The words of a father who is opening his heart. We are called to open our hearts to change in ways that will bring us forward in our Christ like natures. We are called, each and every one of us, to bring forward the living Christ, to be compassion, to share oneness in ways that stretch us and make us uncomfortable. We are called to be like Jesus and like Tevya, growing in our nature to live with change for the highest good of all. So many times in our lives, we are stretched in these ways. And instead of resisting, let us embrace life and let us live. And let us remember that as we do, God will be with us every step of the way through all our days, through every moment. <laughs>